Hi everyone, this is Patricia. As promised, I'm going to talk you through how to make the gratin today. Just one thing I'd like to add before we start to look at how to go about it. Uh, this recipe isn't a recipe that's set in stone. It's a recipe that tends to evolve each time I make it based on what we've brought home from the allotment. My recommendation would be to use vegetables that are actually going to stay fairly firm through the cooking process. It cooks for 50 minutes with tin foil on and then you have to cook it for a further probably 20 minutes just to brown the top. So it's quite a lengthy cooking process. If you actually choose vegetables that perhaps will break down during that cooking process, you could end up, end up with a sloppy soup rather than a gratin. I'll quickly run through with you the ingredients I'm using for this particular gratin. So here we have two bulbs of Florence fennel, half a dozen waxy potatoes, a celeriac, three carrots, three cloves of garlic, which are hiding there, some fresh thyme, which I've just brought in from the garden, 500 grams of, or half a litre of boiling water, vegetable stock cube, and approximately 100 grams of butter. is to dissolve the stock cube into the half a litre of boiling water. Um, I'm then going to peel all the vegetables. You can chop them by hand if you wish. I'm actually going to use the food processor part of the mixer which actually has a slicer on top. So the idea is to make thin slices of all the vegetables. You can use a mandolin. Unfortunately I'm banned from using this because last time I did it, or, well the one and only time I did it, I took the top off two of my fingers. So no longer able to use the mandolin I'm afraid, but I'm quite happy to use the food. Right, the veg are all chopped and ready to go. The potatoes are currently soaking in some water to get rid of the starch. Uh, the water has the addition of a little bit of lemon juice so that there wouldn't be any discoloration. But before we move on to actually assemble the gratin, I'd just like to share with you a couple of tips. Right, over here I have all the trimmings from the vegetables I've used today. Uh, yesterday I saw an absolutely brilliant tip. It was on the Planet Vegetaria Facebook page. Um, and somebody there, a member of the group, has shared with the group an absolutely superb idea of how to use these leftover bits. So bob over to Planet, Ve Planet Vegetaria and take a little look at that. The other thing is I want to share with you um, this little gadget I have here. I don't know if any of you have got one of these at home. I bought this about 2010. I think it was at a good food show. Um, but I was so impressed with it, I actually went back the next day and bought another one and sent it out to Australia to my son. It's a great little device, so easy to clean, much, much easier than cleaning a garlic press. Um, you can use it for uh, chilies, ginger, but obviously today I've just got the three cloves of garlic in there and um, does it really well, it's so, so easy to clean. So I'd be interested to know if anyone else has one of these in their cupboard. Right, I have, oh, sorry about the camera angle there, I've actually got um, a dish, an oven proof dish here, which I've basted with some butter and melted butter and thyme. So there it is, I've dissolved or melted the butter in a pan and I added the thyme to it. So what we're going to do now is assemble the veg a layer at a time. I think 
probably I've got enough vegetables here to do two layers of each but you want to start with a layer of potato and end with a layer of potato. What I tend to do is season every other layer with salt and pepper but brush in between each layer with this little mix here to which I'm going to add the garlic. So just to go through that again, I'm going to add the garlic to the pan containing the butter and the thyme. Here's the finished product straight out of the oven, looking really 